everyone, Scott from Unknown Sourcing here. Um, today I'm just doing a little bit of um, ripe, ripe pour blending. So um, we bought a batch, a part of a part of a fermentation batch from um, somebody in Yongda area, which is in Linshang, and they've used spring. Uh, 2015 material from wild and natural sources and, and just no spray tea um, to ferment uh, to ferment tea to make ripe poor tea and um, so we, uh, we we got some samples of it and we tasted it and we took it and got it tested it at a laboratory before we committed to purchase a lot because we're you know on pretty good terms with these folks and they were willing to wait a little bit plus they had a fair amount ripe pour as you know is fermented in large you know kind of wet piles called wo uh, dui which really means wet piling and um, so it's fermented for about 45 days or composted as it were and then um, when it's done it's typically dried out they make furrows in the piles to kind of gradually allow it to dry out, and then they're, as they're able to, if they have more space, they can gradually spread it out more, more, uh, you know, kind of more like a shallow pile, gradually dry it out. So when it's dried out, it's then graded into various leaf sizes, and um, we purchased uh, grade one leaf size, grade three, and grade five. And again, the grades, the, the, the smaller the number, the smaller the leaf. We also purchased a, um, like a gong ting or a golden needle grade, which is the finest leaf um, from that fermentation batch as well. Um, I'm gonna give, show you a little bit here if I can. Um, so this is the, um, this is the gong ting, also called the, I call it golden needle because it's a, because the tea, the, the tea used for the fermentation was spring and rather tippy um, tea, we got a lot of um, this grade. You can't, maybe you can't see it very well, but it's quite small and it's very golden in color. Um, this tea all by itself tend, tends to have kind of like a creamy taste. It can also be pungent with a little bit of like slight bitterness, like dark chocolate type bitterness. Um, this tea is often sold on its own in, in a loose leaf form, and it's often used to um, to put on the face of cakes to make them, you know, to make the face of the cake be very kind of gold, more golden in color. Um, as you can see here, this is a grade one, maybe not as small, a little darker. Grade three. Bigger yet, We've still got some golden in there, but it's it's more of a leafy, less tippy. And then here's the grade five. Um, again, you know, you're still seeing a fair amount of tips, and part of it is the material that was used, um, being a spring tea. But um, you're also starting to see more, um, you know, more spindly, you know, bigger pieces, you know, as you can see here. And then you get a little bit of almost chato like little kind of congealed pieces in it as well. I'm um, having a hard time picking it up without making a mess, but yeah. So I think we talked about earlier in one of the one of the videos. Um, blending ripe tea together of different grades is really how you achieve the most texture and the most you know, just overall the best flavor profile and the most complexity because each of these different leaves, leaf grades, is going to have its own character. It's going to have similar character to the other ones because it's the same source material and they underwent the same fermentation, uh, wodue conditions. Um, but again, because of the size of the leaf or the maturity, you know, as it's coming out of the plant, you have you have tips and then you have leaves and then you have maybe leaves that have grown a little larger so that's 
really each of them has their own really unique you know, um, taste. So, um, so what I'm going to do in this case, and I'll pull this down here, you can see a little bit. Um, I've got my scale here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this, this teapot. I'm familiar enough with this teapot, and actually I've drank this tea several times. Normally when I do evaluation, it's in a gaiwan. Um, but, I, you know, I've, I've drank this tea together actually several times. I just kind of want to drink it again because I'm trying to decide um, how I'm going to blend for the cake that I want. I'll probably release this as a 2016 um, year of the, what is it, the year of the monkey next year? Is that it? Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I'm going to release that as kind of like my early 2016 ripe cake. So I'm going to take... Um, I'm going to use about 8 grams in this teapot here. So that means I'm going to need about, what, 2, about 2 grams of each. That's easy, actually. <laughs> so I'm going to take here, I've got, that's 1.8 grams, take a tiny little bit more. And you can try this at home. I do this also with, with teas from, you know, I'm also going to do a blend maybe where I take tea, this Yongda tea, and I mix it with a Monghai tea that I have, a ripe tea. I've tried it once, you know, just to kind of as a little experiment. And it was quite good and quite complex. So it doesn't have to be one tea from one batch that you blend together. All right. Okay, four grams. We'll take two of this. Five point two. I want to get up to six. Sometimes I have to move. I have to touch the scale and move it again when I'm use, adding the micro amount so that it'll register. Something there. Um, up to seven point seven. Just add a tiny little bit more. Okay. A little bit over, but that's okay. So now we've got a tea here that's equal parts of each of those four teas. And um, this is how I'd plan to blend it. it. Looks like we've got a little, oh, this is kind of cool. Got a little uh, kernel here of a chahua, a camellia flower. A little kernel here, a little unopened. I don't know if you can see that, it's kind of cool. And actually, um, I've actually blended with Chahua before, and I've, I've sold cakes that are um, Chahua, and um, the Camellia flower and Rapur tends to go very well together. I used to sell just the Chahua all by itself, but it's really, um, especially the organic ones, they really, the, the flowers tend to have little, um, they'll tend to hatch worms and other little parasites on them. Um, if they even get the slightest amount of humidity, um, which is kind of a bummer because, um, you know, you have a bunch of these chahua cakes, just flowers, or the chahua in the, in the, uh, I'm just kind of blending it with my hand here a little bit before I put it in the teapot. Um, so yeah, chahua. And again, like a lot of natural things that haven't been sprayed, you know, they they can develop, you know, parasites. Obviously, poor doesn't because there's nothing really that wants to eat it. I've dropped a couple here. That's okay. So I'm gonna take it and just you know, it'll get blended there. Just fine. So move these. So for these new ripe 
ripe pores. I pretty much always do at least one wash. Um, it helps knock out some of that wudoy, that ferment, fermented taste that the tea has. Ripe pour undergoes just a huge transformation in the first few months after it's after it, um, the fermentation is completed. If you taste a ripe pour that like when I first tasted this one, it was probably just had been out of fermentation, completed fermentation, maybe just about 10 days. And it wasn't particularly pleasant. Um, but in the later infusions, what happens is that wo doi fermentation taste, um, or doi wei as they say in Chinese, um, it drops out after a few infusions. So in the later infusions, you can really get a sense of what the tea is is and is going to become of course that initial power that pungent strong taste in the beginning unavoidably also has fermentation taste with it um, so it just really requires i think a lot of experience and, and knowing like ah oh, okay i there's a hint of there's what i want is in there even though it's masked a lot by that heavy fermentation taste i can still taste through that and and judge its judge its character into the future which um that's something that it would be kind of hard to teach but um like i said you can get a sense of that when you've gone through three or four infusions of the tea um because then that fermentation taste that doi wei is, has faded somewhat and then the character of the tea without that is there for you um, but again, the early infusions, which are often the most critical infusions for understanding a tea, um, tend to have that doi wei mixed in with it, so I decided not to use the strainer. The other thing about really fresh ripe pu'er is it has a lot of water content and it tends to be cloudy. Um, this one's not super cloudy, and again, with later infusions, it fades, but there is some cloudiness in there, and that's normal. I mean, this tea is, you know, a couple months old now. Mm. It's good. I had to... Um, Adding the the Jin Jin, the Golden Needle Gong Ting style in there really just gives it this creamy um, kind of front end. And then the back end from the leaf and the more coarse grade leaf gives it that kind of that that bite and that kind of like chocolatey, that chocolatey bitterness. Um, I really like ripe teas that that are strong because I think that those tend to age age better and I like ripe ripe teas that haven't been heavily um, fermented so there's still a little bit of green in the leaf or kind of like a green brown um, versus the ripe pours that have been kind of really like fermented for longer that that wudui process is taken out longer and often the um, the, fur, the, the, the tea isn't turned as often, and so it's allowed to build up more heat. The wo dui, pa, the wo dui pa, wet piling, or the fermentation or composting as it will, if you put your hand into that stack, um, it'll actually be pretty warm in there because of the, because of the composting um, bacteria that's, that's going through the, through the tea. So the way that they often control the level of, of that is to turn They'll take it. They'll they'll take the tea. They'll take the piles of tea and they'll turn it. When they have to do this anyways, because otherwise the tea that's kind of on the outside will get less fermented, and the tea on the inside will get more. So they've got to turn it, and they do keep like a wet cloth across the top to to you know keep the moisture to keep like a certain level of moisture on the outer layer, even though the outer layer eventually will get turned into the to the inner layer. But I do prefer, um, actually I'm gonna pour this out here. Um, I do prefer the lighter fermentation where you can still taste more of, a, more of it, the, you know, its original, you know, 
you know, more akin to raw pour, more, more of that mouth feel. Um, and it tends to, light fermentation, uh, ripe pour, tends to age a little bit slower too. So in the beginning, for the first couple of years, you're like, oh, this is kind of, you know, it's still got a little bit of fermentation taste and it's got a little bit of, um, it's got a bitterness and astringency to it. But it's these kinds of ripe pours um, that I think age more gracefully and with more character. And again, you know, perhaps um, perhaps it's my preference um, towards just teas that are stronger tasting. Um, but I think, especially when you're using high grade material to do ripe pour, which is becoming more and more commonplace, that it's in a way it's almost like a form of respect to to keep the leaf the integrity of the leaf and the plant still in there i mean you're transforming it but you're doing it in a less aggressive you know way and leaving more of that greenness in it i like that i prefer that um and i think that again with the higher grade um material that's being used in some cases, and in a lot of the stuff that we like to do, just because I think it's more interesting. Um, and the second infusion is really nice, but again, there's 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 still a lot of um, doy away, the fermented taste in it. I'm also kind of really looking for the feeling in the mouth too. You know, is it expansive? Is it pungent? When I'm done drinking, am I still, um, am I still experiencing that? Um, we call that hui gan, or actually we call that liu gan. Liu gan means liu, liu xia lai the liu. It means like to stay. Gan is a gan jue, feeling. So it's that feeling that stays in your mouth even after you're done drinking it. Teas that have um, liu gan, um, a good long aftertaste um, are typically really high quality teas um, because they're they're imparting their essence into your into your mouth and your throat and even when you're done you're still experiencing them um, and this one in my experience has that um, hui gan is something like the returning feeling so you drink it and then you feel like a almost like immediately you feel like a this kind of like blossoming, blossoming kind of like feeling coming up through your throat into your mouth. And no, it's not, that's not your, that's not you getting burned. That's a different feeling. That's just burning your throat. So, um, so Hui Gan is, is, comes back into your mouth. And that's what a lot of people talk about. Um, Hui Gan and Liu Gan are similar, but not necessarily the same thing. Again, Liu Gan is what after you're done, maybe with your tea drinking session, um, you would still be experiencing the tea. And that can be more than just in your mouth and throat, that can be in your body too, um, depending on which teas and again, who you are and everybody is affected by these teas in a different way. Um, so anyways, that's about it. Um, We'll look forward to seeing this tea sometime in 2016. I'm gonna probably gonna go with this particular um, blend of the four different grades of tea from the same fermentation batch. Um, and we also, just to FYI, we're gonna be releasing the 2015 Hui, uh, Yunnan Sourcing Hui Run, which is all from um, Wulong Shan in uh, Xishuan Bana, Monghai County, Wulong Shan, ripe material, um, light fermentation, um, Wild Arbor, a really, really unique tea. Um, never, it's it's got it's pretty similar in some ways to the 2011 and 2013 Huayrun, but it's its own thing, and um, that'll be coming out probably in about a week, and um, and then we're also going to be releasing the tail end of the year of the Ram or the Goat with a goat cake, um, and. Uh, with a funny wrapper, I think you'll like it. It's gonna be, um, it's a Monghai, um, Monghai area blend. 
and it's um, uh, Tuji and uh, Tuji grade, which is like the next smallest grade from Gongting, or no, I'm sorry, the next largest, Gongting the smallest, Tuji the second smallest. Um, it's going to be a Tuji grade, and uh, there's going to be some really small kind of Chato style tea and it's mixed together in there, and it's um, really, really good. So, yeah, just a little more. Winter's coming, fall is here, winter's coming, and, and it's a good time, I think, um, for ripe poor. Um, Hope you all are enjoying your weekend and feel free to ask me any questions. If you have questions about this, you can leave comments in uh, um, below. Um, I'll probably post it on Reddit as well and on Facebook and you're welcome to make comments in any of those um, forums. So thanks for watching. I know it's been a long one, but um, hope you learned something. If you have any questions, again, feel free to ask and I'll hopefully clarify them for you. Bye.